Today, we are going to be installing Linux Mint. So if you've been following my channel, you may know that Linux Mint is one of the two Linux distributions I would recommend for beginners. In case you haven't heard me say this, the two distros I'd recommend for beginners are Ubuntu or Linux Mint. So I thought I should make a video giving you my first impressions on the installation and use of Linux Mint. But without further ado, let's get right into it. So the website is linuxmint.com. Okay, let's go to the download page. Okay, I see 19.3 is the latest version. And let's go to all versions. And yes, this is based on an LTS release of Ubuntu. So let's download this. And oh, I actually get three choices of desktop environment instead of just one. So already this is kind of less user-friendly for beginning user. Though, actually, just if you're unsure, i go with the Cinnamon Edition. And oh, I actually get some download mirrors. Though, I'm just gonna go with the top one. Okay, and actually, because I want this to be from a new user perspective, I didn't already download this file, so we're gonna do it together. Now, this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. Okay, so now I've got my ISO file downloaded. Now again, because I want this to be from a new user perspective, I'm gonna use my Windows 10 VM, because the vast majority of new users will have Windows installed already. All right, so now let's boot from my Linux Mint drive. Actually, I got a few options. Pretty much the same options as Ubuntu, except for this compatibility mode. All right, let's start Linux Mint. Oh, wow, this root screen looks like a DVD spinning in slow motion. Okay, now it actually boots directly into the live ISO. So there's no install only option. Let's see, what do we have here? Okay, well, we've got all system settings here. Boot repair. Oh, this is really useful. I don't know why Ubuntu doesn't come with this by default. I wonder what hex chat is. Let's look at that. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and install Linux Mint. And the reason why this is one of the distros I recommend for new users is because it has this Windows look and feel out of the box. I'm gonna go through this process. Let's test out my keyboard. And yes, we're gonna install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware. All right, let's install Linux Mint alongside Windows Boot Manager. I'm gonna allocate 25.3 gigs. Yes, let's write the changes to the disk. Yes, write the changes to the disks. Man, you must have mistracked me because I am actually in the Toronto time zone. Okay, let's put my... You know what, let's just do... YouTube, and I actually made a typo there, but that's okay. Okay, choose a password. All right, yes, let's require my password login. And oh yes, please, encrypt my home folder. I wonder why the Ubuntu installer got rid of that. I mean, sure, you could do this manually by installing a couple packages and running a single command, but it's just really not the same. It's nowhere near as beginner-friendly as if there was an option in the installer. Okay, so now this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. All right, so now let's restart this computer and boot into our Linux Mint installation. All right, so now we're in our grub screen. We have pretty much all the same options as Ubuntu, except for the logos. Anyway, let's boot into Linux Mint. All right, so login screen pretty much has the same interface as Ubuntu 17.04 and earlier. This is where you switch your desktop environments. This is software rendering. I'm not sure what that's for. Like, this is where it has more of that Mac look and feel. Anyway, let's log in. And welcome to Linux Mint. Actually, the very first step I want to do is go to system settings. Oh, the start menu is pretty much designed to mimic Windows 10 by default. But anyway, let's go to our display under hardware and set this to a more native resolution. I know, I have a crappy screen resolution. Yeah, no, don't show this dialog at startup. Let's see our first steps. Oh, well, we got system snapshots, which I don't think is really necessary if you're already doing backups. A driver manager, you can do that to install any additional drivers. Kind of surprised you Ubuntu doesn't have this login screen after first login after installation. Well, it has something like this, but it's nowhere near as useful as Linux Mint's. And wow, this basically does nothing, at least for VMware. So let's launch into Update Manager, because I need all the security updates. Like, at minimum, I want to stay on top of my security updates. You really should, too. Let's just sit, okay. Oh, do you want to switch to a local mirror? No, not sure. Let's get a faster speed. Anyway, we'll just pick the one with the fastest speed. Let's just look under these. 
This is basically nothing. Let's just update our ABT configuration. So this is the thing that makes it less user friendly. You're not presented with as much choices between like where you want to download your updates from. It's just like server for your country or main server and that's it on Ubuntu. So you got this whole abundance. But if you don't know which one to pick, just pick the one with the highest speed. I mean, let's just apply this update. There's actually a new version to update manager itself. So yeah, I applied that before. We can go any further. Alright, it's just relaunched update manager. Oh, we got a lot of updates. Anyway, let's just select all these updates just in case and install them. Okay, don't really know why it shows this. I think it's just silly, but let's just hit okay. You don't really need to show all the packages that are being upgraded in the warning thing. Alright, this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. Oh wow, it just relaunched the update window. And Ubuntu would just do it in one window. But I guess it just likes to have one update window for downloading and another one for installing. Alright, now with our updates done, let's just wait for this to check if there are no other updates, and it looks like nope. Alright, then you can just change the traditional or modern. Let's say I want to go traditional, and it looks like an older version of Windows. And you know what? I like that modern look, so let's go with that. It's like whichever you prefer, bugging me to check my video drivers, so that's one thing I don't like. Yeah, let's look around the system settings and see what's in here. Let's see, what backgrounds do I have? Let's look at all these. Wow, look at all these backgrounds. I don't think I need to go through all of them, but you get the idea. And rule of thumb, if you don't know what a setting does, just leave it be. And then I can do font selection. I can even affect the window borders only. So, like, I want this dark, like Ubuntu, but I want the rest white. But I personally like it all dark, so, so let's use the dark theme. Oh yeah, icons. I don't know what the difference is. Some more reason DMZ black. Yeah, let's use that. Crash is out of date. Mm, yeah, let's update it. Ooh, wow. Look at all these themes. Your account details. This. this is where I go if I ever change my password. I can't click anywhere here. You have to click on this box. But this is where I go if I want to change my name, my password, or my picture. Let's look at extensions. Oh, we got user friendly GNOME extensions here. A feature that Ubuntu lacks. It's pretty much have to install your own. Yeah, let's enable this corner. Say, like, I wanna I just use this to show the desktop. There we go, I can do that. Say, I'd run a command if I go to this corner. Let's see if. Oof, that's not good, so let's just disable this. Say, like, show all windows. If I do that, ooh, okay. Still have the welcome screen open. Show all workspaces. Oh, I have four workspaces. Yeah, I probably don't want all of these open. I can add a workspace to these on this button. Oh, um, what are desk slots? Hmm. Pretty much similar to Applets. And Cinnamon Desktop Environment is based on GNOME. That's why it'll behave somewhat like GNOME. Oh, I have disks right here. Just run own disks. I've got printers. Let's look at my system info. Upload system info. When would I ever want to do that? I mean, what's in general? Eh, not much. Privacy. There's no telemetry option. Let's look at users and groups. Well, Ubuntu does have a way more user-friendly version of this. Oh, login window. Oh, wow, the default display manager, that's what makes up your login screen, by the way, on Ubuntu doesn't allow for any customization whatsoever. So basically, you have to install IDM and install a customization program. And I'm not going to go through all the system settings, otherwise this would go on forever. Hmm, let's see what's available in Software Manager. Wait, they have Minecraft? Oh my gosh, Ubuntu doesn't have this by default. You know what, let's install it. Hmm, don't even know why you need to state every dependency you're gonna install. I think that's just silly. Install in Minecraft. Alright, while we're waiting for this, let's see what other software is there. I just wondered, do they have Spotify? Because I cannot live without music on my computer. Oh, they have two versions. Alright, let's just install it. Oh, and this time it didn't even ask me for a password. What happens if I click on this? Click on the following packages. Let's just search for Minecraft. Just see if you get installed. Oh, yes you did. Oh, that's not really all that great. Eh, let's just ignore it. Oh, okay. So, let's see. Is Spotify installed? Oh, no, it doesn't even have that ugly mouse cursor like you'd have on Ubuntu. You know what? I'm not gonna bother signing in. Oh, I <laughs> triggered a hot corner. I might want to disable that. What else would I want? Let's see if they have Flowblade. So if I can't install Flowblade, I don't know what you're doing. Like, I rely on this for my video editing. Anyway, let's install it. 
I think it's a very underrated Linux video editor. I mean, while we're waiting for that to install, because I'm pretty sure that'll take a long time. Let's go to the firewall. They even copied one thing from Ubuntu that's stupid. Firewall is not enabled by default. Hmm. Documentation. Just use Google. Really? There are web rooms? It's just running off Firefox. What about IRC chat room? What is this supposed to be? Oh, this is hex chat. You know, I'm gonna comment. Hello, you're on YouTube. You know what? I don't think we need to see everybody's chats. Yeah, let's quit. <laughs> yeah, because it just wants you to stay connected, but we don't need that. Oh, really? What can I do to contribute? Oh, another thing that runs off the web. Oh, financial help. That's the first thing you think of. Sponsorships. Oh, well, I can even support the community, like I'm doing right now, by posting this video. Oh, well, that installed quickly. Let's see if we... Watch it. It's in the extent full screen. Really? Unfortunately, this is very slow to run due to my terrible VM configuration. But you know what? Let's just exit this. You know what? I don't need to install any other software. Otherwise, this would go on forever. Okay. Oh, games. What games do you have? Oh, that's not a lot. Let's skip back to software. Oh, one thing I forgot to check is files. This is not as intuitive as I need one to. You know what? I need a Drew Hans files folder. Oh, this really mimics Windows, but anyway. Create new document. Oh, you wouldn't have this by default, but this is omitted. Open his root. Eh, no, this is kind of stupid in my opinion. Elevated privileges. Good job of telling me that. Also, why do you even have this feature in the first place? Anyway, let's create a new file the proper way. We're going into LibreOffice. There you are. Okay. Test file made on Linux Mint. Okay, let's save this. Test. I am putting this in my Drew Hans files folder. Save. And of course, you can put files on your bookmarks, just like that, so then you have quick access to it. And if I open this up, mm, there you go. Oh, I really need to put the list view on per file basis. That's kind of stupid. Let's close that event. And you, of course, you got terminal, where you can run any bash command. I'm running Linux kernel 5.0.032 generic. This even supports apt. I don't really want show desktop. Let's just remove it. Actually, I like this usually right there. Oh, but anyway, I just wonder what this warning is. Oh, that's weird. Oh, it opens up to this page. System reports. Hmm, well, that's kind of useful. Muntu doesn't have this by default. Oh, I need to install language packs. Okay, this is from Restore Tony. Probably don't need to do it. Yes, let's ignore this problem. System information. Oh, well, this is very technical. Crash reports. Wow, lets me know every single thing I've ever did wrong. Anyway, let's go to YouTube. Com. And I normally get rid of these flexible spaces. I think they're just stupid. Let's look up a really cool channel. Okay. By the way, we got 25 subscribers at the time of shooting this video. Actually, you know what? Since this is playing anyway, let's go here. Let's. Ooh, wow, this is a very futuristic sounding volume switcher. Wait, can I go HD? Because this is very low quality. Ah, that's better. And of course you got full video and sound, it's just like you should on any OS, more computer. How well does it switch to my web tab? Okay, let's say like, I want to click a link here. That's my Instagram. Okay, just look through here. Yes, of course I got a screenshot utility. What's a virtual keyboard? Oh, can I get out of this? Come on, you gotta be kidding me. Oh, there we go. That was kind of counterintuitive. Mm, have GNOME system monitor. Same thing that's on many other GNOME based distro. Wait, I have Synaptic Package Manager? This is very useful for advanced users, just to have it already installed. On Ubuntu, you have to install it manually. Now, I still prefer just the regular GNOME software, just because why complicate things when you don't really have to? It's really just there if you don't want to use the terminal for things that you have to install through APT directly. Hmm, I wonder what the lock screen looks like. Ooh, this looks cool. What if I just checking? That's kind of weird. Oh, I can even use the keyboard. What if I hit this, though? Ah, let's get my display scaling again. This is a lock screen. If I actually enter the correct password. There we go. One thing I don't like is that it has all these preferences things. I prefer to keep that in just the preferences app. Wow, you have very little options here. Whatever installed, you have to live with it. That's very restrictive. Well, I'm pretty sure you can remove it with Synaptic Package Manager, but that's kind of an advanced option. Well, as a lot of applications pre-installed by default, though, pre-installed things you cannot remove without being an advanced user, but it does have some user-friendly access to administrative applications. It's probably good for those people who are a bit tech-savvy in the first place, or a bit less depending on the way you look at it.
So, do I still recommend Linux Mint for a beginner? Yes, definitely. It's designed for those people that just really want that Windows look and feel, but don't want to go through any effort of doing any theming whatsoever. But I would say, if you want to do any kind of theming, you should probably go with Ubuntu. Because again, Linux Mint is designed for those people who want that Windows look and feel out of the box. And besides, this is a Ubuntu-based distro, and Ubuntu-based distros are really just different looks and feels with Ubuntu. Like, they're basically pre-applied themes of Ubuntu and maybe different software selections. But anyway, those are first impressions on Linux Mint's installation and use. So thanks for watching. If I missed anything that you think I should have mentioned, please let me know down in the comments. And if you like this video, hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment.